Boy, can I help you? Listen up. I'm bringing you the best content to ever exist in the door-to-door -door industry from sales, leadership, recruiting, and personal development. Well, why would I need that? Because never before have we been able to collaborate with the top experts in their industries, sharing their secrets and techniques on what makes them the best. Wait, who, who are you? I'm your host, Sam Taggart, creator of the DDD Experts and DDD Con. Is there a place we can sit down? Well, come on in. Vanilla is the fastest way to increase your Google and Facebook reviews through text. With a 98% open rate, Vanilla Reviews is the simplest, cheapest way to interact and engage with customers. Visit us at vanillagood.com for more information. Hi everybody, my name is Sam Taggart and I am here with Tyler Melton today. He is from Dallas, Texas and we're both sitting in Los Angeles, Texas, or yep. Los Angeles, California right yep. now, yep. Yep. and we are live coming at you. So what's exciting is we're at the IMG Expo. Great, great turnout. We had Brad Lee speak today and um, some awesome workshops, but we came out here to a roofing convention. We got to know each other a little bit, and I decided, shoot, we need to get you on the podcast. You have some interesting stories. Sure, and sure. We're going to dive into the most craziest story I have heard to date in door-to-door -to -door today. So make sure to listen because this is going to be interesting. Um, but we're going to talk on how to take a business from, you know, you've been in business for about three years now and you've now done over 30 million in business in those three years where most people that are just scraping by to get two to three, four million. You right, know what I mean? Right, right. And to go do that from nothing obviously takes a good leader, a good team, and you've done it in one of the hardest markets per se, right? It right. was like Dallas, there's a 10,000 roofing companies in Dallas, right. Right. and you just said, well, I'm going to do this, boom, start it up, and have done what you've done. So big props. 100%, man. I appreciate it. Glad to, glad to be here, man. Uh, love coming to Cali for these conventions. Uh, learned a lot, met a lot of good people. Um, but yeah, man, the Dallas market, it's crazy. Um, I've got some crazy stories for y'all, so listen up. Um, but yeah, started in uh, 2016, uh, January 11th, 1-1-1. One, one, one. You know, I like seeing those numbers line up. But, but yeah, you kind of had this like weird aligning, you know, tell me. Okay, so yeah. you, you, you had been in roofing how long? So you started? So I started when I was about 25 years old in 2011. I worked for another company um, for about five years. I was their top salesman. I sold over $5 million for them and was brand new to the industry. Never had a sales job before. I was just a go-getter. Um, Love to hustle. No one's going to outwork me. And, uh, you know, I took that. And I just literally went door to door and started my business. I would knock doors for five, six hours a day. And, you know, I just refused to lose. And, and I kept that attitude going. And I just kind of built off that from, from 2016. Here we are in 2019. And I've done over $30 million uh, in sales in the past three years. So it's, been, awesome. it's been a great ride, man. But I've learned a lot. Um, took a lot of hits on the chin. And, and I've had to get up and, and, and face it and, and just keep going. And, and man, it's been a blessing, and, and, and I love what I do, so it's fun. That's awesome. Yeah. So, obviously, you know, it isn't always a smooth to 30 million, you know what I mean, as we always make it out to be. And, I mean, when you first started your own roofing gig, right. were you, did you have this, like, vision of, like, we will do 30 million in three years, or were you like, dude, I just hope that we freaking figure it out, like, No, li li like, literally, I took it day by day. Uh, door by door. I mean, literally one step in front of the other. I didn't worry about like where I was going to be in five, 10 years. Like I just knew that I invested so much in my trade and I knew what I wanted. I made that decision ultimately. Um, and I had the faith um, to go with that. So yeah. it wasn't just me knocking doors. It was me believing like the end result and me having faith in God and, and in my plan and my mission. And, uh, you know, the way I was raised, um, the discipline and the the sports and, and stuff like that is it just kind of all came out in me when I wanted to start my own business for one you know I like being outside I like talking to people I like making a lot of money um, so literally I, I went door to door um, after the hurt or not hurricane after the tornado there was a tornado there was a F4 tornado that hit um, the end of De um, December uh, 2015 and it took out like half a rowlet like the whole city like it wiped it to the cinder blocks so like I took that as an opportunity to go out and, and help people and, yeah. and give back and, and uh, you know, just give back to the community, help restore it better than it was before um, and make a good living, you know, while, while doing that, too. So um, and like I said, I, I really enjoy it. But, yeah, it's been a challenge. It's, it's definitely not an easy business to step into and, and uh, you know, start killing it by any means. But. Yeah. What, what, what were some of the uh, 
like hardships that you were not expecting? Like what was something in particular that you're like, man, I, I wasn't planning on, I wasn't planning on X like, right. or this just curveball threw me out. Sure. Like, sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was brand new to being an owner, so there was lots of challenges. Like I had no idea what I was getting myself into. Um, but I just took it one challenge at a time. And, um, you know, I'm the type of guy that I'm not just going to go through challenges without having a mentor or having someone to call or someone that's already experienced it. So, like, I always call someone, or, or my, whether it's my family or, or a mentor or someone like you, and, and I'll tell them what I'm going through. And I try to, uh, you know, learn from every, everyone else's hardships, too, and apply that to my own business rather than just go out and hit my head on the wall every day. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's been a big challenge. I would say one of the biggest challenges, uh, if not the biggest, especially starting out, is it's cash flow. It's cash flow. Um, you know, when I started this business, I was in debt, uh, probably fifty thousand dollars. You know what I mean? But you know, I didn't let that hang over my head and say, "Look, I'm in debt. I can't go out and make this money." And and you know, you don't want any negative vibes. So um, basically, I just I said, "Screw it. I'm gonna go do it, and nothing's gonna stop me." You know, I know there's an opportunity. Nothing's going to go stop me. So, um, but yeah, starting out cash flow uh, was probably my biggest challenge because, look, you go sign up 20 jobs and then you and then you build them all in, in two, three weeks. Well, next thing you know, you, you owe your crews, you owe your suppliers, and you don't have a relationship built with either one of them. Uh, so if you don't pay your crew on Friday, they leave, they walk. If you don't pay your supplier in 30 days, they walk. Um, and they tell all the other suppliers too. So it's not like you can just screw over one supplier and, you know, you screw over ABC and then you can't go to Southern or, or RSG. It doesn't work like that. Like, um, you have to have all bases covered. So um, with me, the biggest problem starting off was it wasn't selling deals because, you know, I mean, people like me and you, we can go, we can go get ink pretty easily. But um, it's about being able to build those jobs, being able to build them correctly being able to warranty them, being able to handle the insurance company and get them approved, um, and then being able to collect your money. You know, if you don't do all those things, then you're still screwed. You know, you could go do yeah. you could go do six out of the seven, and then if you don't get the money, you just wasted all your time. You know what I mean? So, um, but yeah, I mean, those are my probably the biggest challenges starting out. Uh, you know, cash flow, making sure the crews are paid every week, stuff like that. Because for me, I didn't have lots of money in the bank when I started. I didn't have any money. I was in debt. That's crazy. So what like relationship wise or family or other, like friends, like what were they telling you when you're like, F this, I'm starting my own. Yeah. They like, didn't really know what to say. You know, I came out and told some guys and uh, they were just like, really, you know, that's, you know, that's cool, you know? And, but really for me, it's, it's all like, I'm self-driven. So like, it doesn't matter it for doesn't me matter. what, what anyone else thinks or says, like I learned at a young age that like, just like Brad Lee just said on stage, like, don't, don't give a shit. Like, who cares what people think? And that was the biggest thing for me. If I would have cared what everyone thought when I went to start this business, then I would have never got to where I got, you know. So I kind of just screw it. I don't care what I think or what other people think. Yep. I'm going to go do this, and, and no one's going to stop me. And that's still my attitude, um, and that's going to continue to be my attitude, you know, until, I, until I'm gone. I love that. You know, so I love that. So, you started. How quickly were you hiring others versus just being a one-man sales guy? Like, like how fast did you build? Because now you have thirty-five sales guys. I mean, right, it's not right. like you're just a one-man show doing this. Right. But I mean, at what point were you like, okay, I need to build a team? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So definitely, you know, I started the company in January of sixteen. So, um, you know, I worked for another company for five years, and they actually went under. You know, that's kind of why I started my own deal. I was a very loyal guy. I was the top salesman every year, um, hardest worker, you know, in the room, the first guy in, last guy out every time. So, um, you know, that's that's just kind of how, how it went. But sorry, I kind of got lost track. No, there. but like <laughs> when did you hire your sales team? Like, so, or did you pull them from the guys? So basically I pulled a couple guys from the old company. Yeah, yeah. And those were my first two guys, like, to, to come with me. Um and, and, and they did really well for me, helped me get some signs planted in the neighborhoods, helped me get some traction because yeah. when it's just you, like it's really tough to get going. Like you, you would easily need like two or three guys. Yeah. Um, that way, help you build that traction, help you get the, you know, those sales funnels, the neighborhoods, uh, plant the signs, and then your phone starts ringing. You know, once you start building and 
doing good work and people see your signs planted, um, you know, and then you're knocking doors too, obviously. And then, um, you know, I started firing up leads and stuff like that. But, but yeah, I, I pretty much immediately got two guys to go with me. So it was okay. like two, three guys. And then what I did was I had, you know, I have a lot of friends in the Metroplex. Like I've been out here for 10 years, 10, 12 years. I went to TCU, uh, graduated in 2009. So I, I knew a lot of guys. I knew a lot of guys that, that were money driven, that were great guys that I knew I could turn to killer salesmen. And, and that's exactly what I did is I went to like my best friends first, like, yeah. uh, like one of my best friends, uh, you know, his name's Clayton, you know, I, he was one of my first guys that I went to and, you know, he's at the top of my sales board every single year. And he had just been uh, waiting for an opportunity like this, like his whole life. He'd never really had a, a real sales job where he could come in and, and make $150,000 his first year. And that's exactly what he did. He came in and crushed it. You would have thought this guy was doing this for 10 years. Yeah, you know what I mean? did it. So, like, so now I had four or five guys. You know, I got a, one of my buddies moved up from, from Austin. You know, he came in and, you know, I took him out for two weeks. And now he's one of my sales managers. Uh, so the, I want to I pause you because mm -hmm. I think the principle here is you weren't afraid to go to your best friend and say, right. dude, I'm doing this and you're doing this with me. Right, You know right. what I mean? 100%. And I, and I think a lot of people's fear is they think, oh, I'm just going to go post an Indeed ad. And right, I'm right, go right. get these studs. Right. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. Call your homeboys mm -hmm. and say, we're rallying the crew again. Let's yeah. go. And yeah. it's like, now this is the new sport that we get to play <clears throat> like we were playing in high school. Like, 100%. Like the last way you're going to blow up your company off the bat's Indeed. Like you need to grow it organically. Um, you got to get your, your network to buy in. And if you already know people that that love money and that, that are driven and, and want to make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, like those are your best, those are your top prospects. Like you have yeah. to go for them first and you can't be scared. Like Yeah, most people get scared to yeah. bring it up to them a lot right. of the times. They're, they're, they're like, man, these are really good prospects, but what if I... What if I recruited them and then they didn't do well and then I look bad and then it hurts my relationship? It's like, no, dude, this is the vehicle. Share it, spread it open. Like, right. they need to know about this. Like, you're this doing is a the way. Yeah, if you're doing a disservice, yeah. if you don't tell them about this. Hundred percent, dude. If you're holding something back that can change their life, yes, like they should be pissed off at that. Yes, Clayton, you know I mean? looking back today, saying, "Had you not told me this, where would you be?" Right. You know what I mean? Exactly. It's like, it's like okay, let's let's take the two paths mm -hmm. and. You go with ne without this, now you're welcome. You know what I mean? It's like I literally shaped your new future, your new perspective of money, your new perspective of your self-worth, and I was the reason you did that. Like I just think it – I think people get fearful in recruiting, and right now is a really heavy recruiting season. It's right, like everybody's right, right. like, I'm ramping up for yeah. summer, peak season, whatever, and I'm like – Jeez, just open your mouth to your homeboys first. Like, just start there. Jeez. Right, right. Yeah, it's it's pretty hard to just ramp up like two months before storm season. So yeah, like you got to build year round. You got to build a brand, and you got to, you know, you got to build jobs well. You got to make sure you provide good customer service, good in house training, and you got to kind of grow it organically. And the guys have to be happy. They got to like to work there. There's got to be good atmosphere, good energy, high energy, like you said yesterday. And, and that's my main thing is I try to keep high energy. I try to elevate everyone around me because I realize that, um, you know, you're not going to just hire all stars, but you but you can turn your guys into all stars with training and processes and and just being out in the field with them, uh, holding these meetings, these one on one stuff like that. So um, that's that's really, really helped for us is, is just building a building a brand. And I'm still working on that right now. Like this is my first Facebook live video. So. You know, so, I, I plan on doing this a whole lot and, and a lot of podcasts and stuff like that to help grow us and, and want people to see us because we got we got a great company. We've done $30 million in three years, and this is our first three years. So imagine where, where we'll be in another three years. Like, yeah, that's that's rapid growth. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So I want to I wanna dive into this because you've had an interesting, obviously, roadmap, and you were telling me about this principle of, I just had this, it was like this one, one, one kept popping up and you're like, what is the sequence? Kind of tell me this like story. Cause I think it, I love how you followed your heart. I love how you followed the signs. And I think a lot of times we don't follow the signs. Sure. We're like, I see the sign and I'm like, yeah, nah. yeah, yeah. so that's the hardest part. Yeah. And, that's the and, hardest part. So I saw the sign 
like six months before I started my company. That was the crazy part. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which, which I've always known, like, look, like you're a great salesman. You're, you're a very hard worker. Like I've always expected more from myself. I just always have like come from a sports background. So yeah, from Permian high school, Mojo football, all that stuff. So, um, Sorry, I keep getting that track. No, I love track. It. So tell me, kind yeah. of, you, you you had these different signs. Yeah, where yeah, yeah. It was like you were like there was the numbers. Every time I looked at the clock, it mm-hmm. was one one. It was eleven. Yeah, so I was, see eleven eleven a lot. Like uh, started my company on one eleven. So like, and I look it up like numerology and like the Bible, all that. It, it says like new beginnings, like for for the number one one one. Like I was seeing this like six eight months before I started my company. You it's not it's not one, years. One, one. And then literally I would have people come up to me like at concerts, stuff like that. And they would just tell me, look, I've never met you, but like your energy is, is crazy right now. Like, like I had five, probably five or six people tell me that like within six months of me starting my company, just because where I was at mentally, like I knew something big was about to happen, but I didn't know what it was. You know what I mean? But I'd put in that five years of work selling and hustling my ass off and, and, and not really being paid accordingly. And then you're right, I would see these signs, you know, I pray a lot, obviously, I'm big with faith. Um, I would see the numbers. um, And then boom, all of a sudden, the company I was worked for went, basically went bankrupt and closed their doors. When I had six jobs ready to build, I was negative on cash. So boom, all of a sudden, I got six jobs here and the company can't build them and now they're closing their doors. Well, I was looking forward to that 18, 20 grand of those six jobs. That was all the money I had coming in. And then all of a sudden that turned into no money. So literally I went from, you know, making hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, 2012, 13, 14, and then 15, like, you know, they, all of a sudden they can't build my jobs. And, and it's December. It's already the slow season I, and I'm killing it. I got six jobs ready to build. That's good for a December salesman. And then they can't build them. So, you know, I just obviously, I, I sat back and I, you know, I wasn't even pissed off was the crazy part. You know, I, I might have been for like 30 seconds, but deep down I knew what I had, I knew what I had um, inside of me to go out and do what they did, but times 10. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I knew I was good. I knew my trade. I'm great at door to door. I'm a big hustler. So nothing was going to stop me. Like when I, when I put my mind to something, nothing stops me. So you know, I took a week or so and, and, you know, this was like a week before Christmas and I literally just like would just talk to myself and, and I told, you know, I sat down with my dad and my mom and I said, here's what's going on. Here's, here's what I'm thinking about doing, you know, and, um, and it just kind of happened all organically. Like I decided myself, I had the faith and, and the mission and then I just went for it. I said, dude, nothing's going to stop me. Even if I go out and sell 20 roofs this year. Like, I'm going to be positive. I'm going to be in the green. And I'm going to work for myself and do this. Like, this is my dream to work for myself. You know what I mean? So I just kind of took it as like a a sign. An opportunity. And an opportunity. And, yeah. then, and then I made something out of nothing. I love that. Uh, yeah. I love that. Yeah. So you've had a rep. I'm going to transition a little bit. You yeah. you had this rep. Still have that. Yeah, you have this rep that had this is a crazy story so if you're on facebook or listen to this tune into this tune into this this is really interesting we'll finish with this so to, i've ne- so i've had guns pulled on me in dallas right, right. I, i've had a gun multiple times get off my property effing little door-to-door guy right right all the time we've had those stories like this or give this a thumbs up if you had a gun pulled on you like or comment your best story like geez put this out and if somebody can come up with a cooler story than this one or like crazier i don't say this is cool i think this is crazy just crazy um tell us about this rep that and and i want to talk about the principle and the mindset after this but sure tell us the story this is crazy well first of all i've never heard of anyone um you know i've always heard about people getting guns pulled on them i've met adjusters for six years and and i've never heard of someone actually getting shot at or you know getting in a physical battle with someone um so that's the first thing but but yeah, one of my canvassers, he, he started working for me two years ago. It was right after the Frisco storm in uh, 17, a big storm, I think, in March or April. And uh, he had wor- been working for me for two months, still works for me. Um, anyways, he, he was like an ex-gym trainer, stuff like that. So real fit guy. 
Um, but he is hardcore door to door. He knocks hundreds of doors a day and he's a true killer out there in the market. But anyways, we had trained him up for a couple weeks. He was doing real well. He's getting 10, 20 leads a day, stuff like that. And, um, you know, he's, he's one of my, one of my favorite guys in the company just because of, of everything that's happened and, and he's still hardcore. But, but what happened is we were out, or he was out in Frisco with two of my sales guys and, um, you know, he got a gun pulled on him at the door and, and this was the same week of a hailstorm. So mind you, there's probably 30 roofers on the street, up and down the street. Like everyone knows what's going on. Like there's baseball size hail, there's broken glass, every car's beat up, every windshield's busted. Everyone knows it's a catastrophe. So of course there's the do not solicit signs, you know, in the neighborhood, which, yeah. you know, half of the United States have these signs, yeah, but it yeah. doesn't stop anyone, doesn't stop us. And for one, we're not selling cookies. You know, yeah, we're, yeah. we're trying to help restore someone's property better than it was before. So, um, so basically, Jake knocked on this guy's door. Um, you know, hello, sir. I'm I'm just here to provide a free roof inspection. Um, you know, we're doing your neighbors across the street. We're local. We're fully insured. And the guy is pissed off. You know, he's probably had his door knocked ten times that day, and he immediately kind of shuts the door, runs and grabs his gun, and runs outside. So my guy's like what the hell, what the hell do I do, you know? So he kind of starts backtracking, and he says, dude, like, this is a free roof inspection, like, just chill out. And the guy is so pissed. Jake starts running to the neighbor's yard, right? So he's he's in the neighbor's yard. Well, the neighbor shoots him twice. One hits him in the groin, and one hit him um, in his pancreas. So he, he had to have emergency surgery that night. But so Jake gets shot twice. Um, both my sales guys are on the street and saw it happen. They saw it happen. I'm sure y'all saw this on the news. Give me some likes if you saw this on the news. Um, but yeah, both my sales guys saw this happen. So Jeremy, uh, he runs down the street and literally my saved Jake's life. He, he put his hand on Jake's wounds and held the blood so he wouldn't bleed out while calling 911 at the same time. So um, you know, his dad's a doctor. He's not scared of blood. You know, my other guy, he's, he didn't want anything to do with it. He was yeah. about to throw up. Like he was down the street, like freaking out. Um, Jeremy, on the other hand, he's over here doing two things at once. He's talking to 911 while holding, you know, Jake probably saved his life. And, and I tell him this a lot. I'm like, dude, you realize you, you probably saved Jake's life. Right. And, and he's like, yeah, you know, he kind of doesn't think much of it, but I think the world of him and, you know, all my guys, but especially him for doing that. I mean, that's like freaking Braveheart. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so anyways, Jake, you know, obviously the ambulance came, got Jake, takes him to the hospital, emergency surgery, um, went through his pancreas. So um, he had like half his large intestine removed. And um, the other the other shot was this far away from his spine. And if it was an eighth of an inch, any direction, he would have been paralyzed. Wow. And the other bullet, if it would have been an eighth of an inch in any direction, he would have bled out. So to me, that tells me God was there. Obviously, angels were there looking yeah. after him, all that good stuff. And, uh, you know, Jake's still with me now. And, and he's, yeah, a, he's a warrior, man. You should see the scar. He's got a scar from here all the way down to his belly button. Um, I, did, I, just, I just find this crazy because, like... To get shot, the trauma coming from that to an average person is like, I'm never knocking doors again. Like every door you go up to, you're like, is he going to pull a gun on me? Is he right. going to shoot me? You know right, what I mean? Right, right, Like it's already scary enough going to a door. Mm -hmm. But after that experience, and so like the mindset of him being like, all right, I need to get back to work, guys. Like here we so, go. So know, here's like, the crazy part. Like I went to see him in the hospital like the day after and his parents are in there and he's like, Tyler, man, I'm, I'm sorry. And... You know, I'm like, Jake, what the hell are you sorry for, dude? Like, you're a fucking warrior. Like, you're going to be a like, you, – I'm going to make you a star. Like, you, you're an all-star. And he's like, dude, I'm sorry. Like, I'm ready to go back to work. That's the first thing he said to me when I went to the hospital. And, and I'm looking at him, and he's like – he's acting like nothing happened, dude. And I'm like – I'm like, I'm just shaking my head. I'm in shock, literally, like – I didn't sleep the night before because I feel so bad. I wasn't even there, had nothing to do with it, but I just got a big heart and I wear it on my sleeve and I felt so bad for him and his family and I wanted to do whatever I could to make it better. Um, but yeah, he literally acted like it didn't phase him. So obviously it took him a couple months, 
several months to recover. He was back to work probably in three months, and, and he was knocking doors. He literally was was ready to come back to work while he was in the hospital. That's and that to great. me that to me meant everything. Like just seeing his spirit like be where it was when that happened like shows me whatever I go through in life like. You can make it out of it. You yeah, know it I could mean? be worse, yeah. right? One hundred percent. You know, we had a speaker at Door to Door Con, Paul Jenkins, talk about positivity, and he's like, "Well, think of like, it could have been worse. Yeah, it could have been an eighth of an inch to yeah. die, and he could be paralyzed. He could be dead. He could so be paralyzed. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, he it's could like, be mentally damaged, like to yeah. where he never wants to go to work to work again. And here he is. He's like a freaking warrior. Like yeah. he acted like it didn't even touch him. And th- and that's the part where, in any situation in life, it's all. How do we respond to it? It's like it happened, right? You didn't right. control that. He didn't right. have control. He got shot. Like right. it's like, geez, we're not expecting that. But it's like the the fact that he was able to just bounce back. Yeah. He's still crushing, you know, a year later. And it's it's what we do with situations like that yeah, that I yeah. think is so powerful. And I've watched reps you know, get a ticket from door knocking and be like, I can't do this anymore. You know what I mean? And I'm just like, whoa, like, geez, oh. So I offered you my know. guys, I offered them a TV. My cell, I got 35 sales guys in Plano, Proclaim Roofing. I offered my guys a TV for the first guy who gets a no solicitor's ticket. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I love it. It's like, so, means you're hot. It's yeah. hustling. Like, yeah. But it's crazy because there's there's times where it's just like, mind it, the job plays mind games on right you, right oh, as yeah. an owner you have your own mind games like how am i supposed to make payroll this weekend we didn't collect right, right? i mean right. that game happens right and you're sitting there like geez and then the other mind gain of well i haven't had a sale all day today does that mean i'm not going to sell today like what if i don't sell and then i can't feed and then like, my wife's gonna get mad at me and then, like you know like there's always a mind game right. and i just think that this warrior of a rep jake that gets shot to be able to go back into the field and just say, I'm going to pick up where I left off a sec- second, I'm healthy, and let's go. I'm sure he'd go back to that street and just be like, I'm going to freaking sell your neighbor. Dude, like, he was ready to go while he was in the hospital. That's insane. Like, it like, was that nuts. blows my mind. It was nuts to see like his response, just like you said, coming from a, coming through an obstacle and literally, for one, he acted like it wasn't an obstacle, and for two, like... He's literally got tubes running through him, dude. Oh like, my gosh, I can't imagine. That blew my mind. Yeah. So I hope this, if you're watching this, I hope this didn't like startle you. I mean, this is the first time I've ever heard yeah, of Yeah, I mean, no one's, like, you know, yeah. I've never heard of anyone getting shot going door to door. Yeah, like, so like, is, that's why it's so crazy. It's, I know. It's I, literally, I'm, I've probably knocked 40,000 doors and, and I personally haven't had a gun pulled on me, but I've had several of my guys, but never has a shot been fired and triggered and i've met adjusters for six years straight that have worked all over the country and never you know even yeah, in like detroit don't... or chicago like they'll pull guns but they won't shoot yeah they you don't know? shoot them yeah. yeah that's why i was like don't think that this is like how it always is if no. you're new to door to door i'm just no. saying I, and i wanted to you know beware right yeah but i just think it's so cool the principle and the mindset of what he went through right um but yeah i wanted to wrap up on that and i always ask and one i wanted to appreciate you tyler for sure. your time and no 100 percent for so. you getting on this i yeah. mean those that are watching and listening obviously um give us give them some love you know give them a like or something but uh I I wanted to ask the same, same question I ask every single person at the end. Okay. Uh, one one piece of advice if you were to give the door to door space, you know, it could be leaders, it could be reps, it could be roofers, it could be not. Um, sure. One piece of advice that you would just say, if I in a nutshell, like a quick, like here's my best advice. Okay. So my best advice would be don't listen to anyone. Um, go knock two hundred doors a day. Um, Make sure your pitch is right, and make sure you present value at the door on, on identifying a problem and then identify a solution. If you guys can do that and make it um, not about the price, make it about what they're getting, you know, that's, that's the whole idea in sales and, and in marketing is present that value up front, up front for free. Do more than the other guy. You know, be hardcore door-to-door. Be consistent. That's that's the biggest thing in, in door to door is consistency, and it's a numbers game. So, you got to know that. I love that. Well, I appreciate so, your time, my yeah. man. This is, Sam, this appreciate it, awesome. brother. You have to come to come to Plano now. I'm coming to Plano. Yep. Yep. I'm coming out there in April. Yep. Okay. Yep.